My name is Nelly, and last month, something absolutely insane happened to me. To say my life has changed completely would be an understatement. I don't even know how to put into words what has happened, but I'm going to try because this is a story I just really need to share. Honestly, we never know what surprises life is hiding for us just around the corner. I was just enjoying a normal teenage life, until one crazy day. So, I'm an only child in your standard middle class family. I guess I never really felt like I fully fitted in at home or at school, and maybe I'm a bit odd. But it's not because of my parents. I mean, they absolutely adored me, and I've always been quite spoiled. But, oh yeah, I should probably add, I'm adopted. It's something I'm totally fine with, so no one needs to feel sorry for me. My parents died not long after I was born, in a car crash. I've always been curious to find more info about them, but my adopted parents didn't really know much about what happened. There is one thing, though. Not many people actually know I was adopted because I look pretty similar to my adopted parents. Which suits me fine, actually. It's always made things easy. The only thing is that they're a bit older. Recently, I got into martial arts. I've always had obscure, random hobbies, and my parents have always encouraged me. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, after school, I walk to my martial arts class. I love it. I can't really explain, but it makes me feel so free and powerful. It also makes me forget about all those awkward teenage things. Like why I don't have that many friends, and why I've never had a boyfriend. During one of my classes, I went out to get some water from the vending machine and noticed an older guy hovering around. I made eye contact with him, but he quickly looked away. Then I forgot about him. That's what martial arts does to me. It helps me live in the moment. The next time I had class, it was pouring rain, and of course, I'd forgotten my umbrella. I was running along the sidewalk when a car pulled up in front of me and rolled the window down. I recognized the driver, but couldn't place him. He offered me a lift home, but I knew better than to accept a lift from a complete stranger. But he seemed like a nice person, and I was sopping wet, so after much hesitation, I accepted. I was sitting in the back, and he was looking at me in the rearview mirror. He laughed and told me not to worry, that he wasn't a serial killer. But what if he was? His eyes were honestly so familiar. He dropped me safely at home and asked if I'd mind taking the box on the seat next to me. It needed to be recycled and he hadn't had time. I thought it was a bit random for him to ask me, but I didn't want him to suddenly turn angry on me, so I did it. I said bye and ran inside to dry off. My parents were still at work, so I had the house to myself. I decided to double-check the box before recycling it. It wasn't empty. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Inside were hundreds of newspaper article cutouts, old photos, and some official-looking documents that were yellowed from age. They were all of me. Me as a baby. Me as a toddler. And then I spotted something else. A photo of me with a man and a woman. And I kid you not, this woman looks exactly like me. It was almost like looking in the mirror. This had to be my birth parents. But who was the man who had given me this box? And why? I was so overwhelmed, I just sat there staring. None of the articles mentioned a car crash. They didn't mention death at all. Were my parents still alive? Then why had I been adopted? I read on and it quickly became very clear that there was more to the story than my adopted parents had ever let on. As I read on, I discovered that my parents had been teenagers when they'd fallen pregnant with me, and coming from a traditional, conservative background, they'd been forbidden to keep me. My mom was only 14 when she had me, and my dad was 16. I couldn't believe it. I was 14 now. That means my mom had me when she was my age. This was too mental. Something weird happened next. I noticed that my surname was the same as my birth parents, but... Then why was it also the same as my adopted parents? We all had the same surname. Was that just some kind of bizarre coincidence? I felt sick. Underneath the photos, I found a dusty article, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was a photo of my birth parents, and my adopted parents, together, in exactly the same photo. Then it clicked. My adopted parents were actually my grandparents. But that meant, no, I couldn't even think this next thought. 
My adopted parents, who were actually my grandparents, were horrible, cruel people. How could they have done this and just hidden it from me? The article said that they'd been so embarrassed that their daughter had fallen pregnant as a teenager that they'd sent her away to a boarding school and told her to never come home again unless she fixed her ways. This had all been in the newspaper. But I didn't even know my adopted parents had even had a kid before. I mean, now that I thought about it, it made sense that they seemed particularly good at raising a child. After all, they'd done it before. Suddenly, I wondered who my dad was. Did that mean he was still alive too? As I sat, thinking about how I might actually be able to meet my real parents, my adopted parents came through the door. They could tell straight away that something was up, and before I even had the chance to speak, my dad grabbed the box out of my hands and ran out of the house with it. Well, that did it. As if I could be any more furious. I started screaming at my mom. I can't believe you! You're a liar! How could you lie like that? You told me my mom died! My mom is your daughter! This is so messed up! You're my gran! I couldn't stop shouting at her. She just sat there, sobbing, and said she'd done it for her daughter's own good, and for mine too. She said that if people had known her 14-year-old daughter had given birth, our family would never live it down. I honestly didn't care about what she was saying. I just felt so shocked and sick that she could lie to me about her daughter being dead. What kind of sicko fakes their own kid's death like that? I went to my room and locked my door. I needed to get away from these people. My grandparents? Adopted parents? I didn't even know what to call them anymore. My dad, or should I say my granddad, came home later that night, drunk. I could hear them arguing all night long. I'd managed to keep one photo from the box of me and my real parents. The man seriously looked so familiar. In the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up and realized I knew who it was. The man in the photo was the man who'd given me a lift home. It was him. I knew it, which meant I'd met my dad. It felt like my heart might stop. I had to find him. I didn't have to look hard because the next morning he came knocking at our door. My parents wouldn't let him in, but I pushed my way through them and threw the door open. He was crying, saying he'd been trying to make contact with me for months. We fell into each other's arms crying, and my parents just stood there silently, frozen. He couldn't stop crying, and he said he was sorry, but he was too late. He said my mom had been dying to meet me for years, but now that chance was gone. I didn't understand what he meant. I could barely make out what he was saying through all of his tears. Then he told us. My mom had been diagnosed with cancer last year, and she'd sadly passed away that morning. My whole life felt like it was falling apart. My adopted parents, standing behind me, were suddenly hysterical. I thought my mom was going to have a panic attack. Their daughter had died, and they hadn't even seen her for 14 years. It felt like something out of a movie. It couldn't be real. These were my grandparents, and this was my dad. And here he was telling us that my real mom had just died that morning, and now I'd never had the chance to meet her. It felt like I was losing her all over again. When I was young, I'd had to deal with the fact that she'd died in a car crash. And now, here I was mourning her all over again, this time for her real death. And I hadn't even met her. That day, we sat and made funeral plans. It was the last thing any of us felt like doing, but it had to be done. Even though my real dad had never forgiven my grandparents, or my adopted parents, whatever you want to call them, he knew he had to sit with them now and sort this out. Even if just for the sake of me. I felt lucky that I'd finally met my dad, my real dad. It was like he'd come back from the dead. But also, my life got turned totally upside down. I knew I had to find a way to forgive my grandparents. They were already suffering enough with the news of my mom dying, and I didn't think they would be able to cope if I just up and left them. My mom's funeral was one of the most surreal moments of my life. Imagine going to your mom's funeral, a mom you've never even met. It crushed me. It was the hardest day of my life. Eventually, I forgave my grandparents completely. 
and started hanging out with my dad a lot. I couldn't believe how similar we were. He loved martial arts too. Seems my obscure interests weren't so obscure after all. So even though I never met my mom, at least I'd met my dad. And so in a way, I guess it was kind of a blessing. Now I have grandparents and a dad. From thinking my parents were dead, to meeting one of them and realizing they'd both been alive this whole time, well, life can be very surprising. What do you think of my story? Crazy, right? Please leave your comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.